My name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tonjika TV. Um, what a killer, beautiful, chimey, uh, wonderful sound there. I mean, that was really, that's a really cool sort of chime-tastic thing. I don't normally describe, uh, I wouldn't normally describe this tone as chimey, but a lot of the chime I feel like is coming from the bridge of this strat, which normally to me is just very pokey and, and, and thin. Uh, but at its best, it can sound a little like a telly. There, I think it's a little telly chimey esque. But with the fullness of the basement and the bright channel here, um, it really does a thing. Um, as you can see, we're in Rig Manager, and uh, this is the 59 5F6 uh, basement B3 profile. So nice and bright and uh, wonderful. But um, the point of the video today is to talk about mid range, because I got a question from a guy that said, HW, um, when you are pushing the mids on the graphic EQ of the Kemper, this is his question. When you're pushing the mids on the graphic EQ, because he looked at different different things, uh, different like things in the Tone Junkie Tone Tools, which are down here, and there's different EQs and stuff in here, right? So like here's one of them, lead uh, EQ, post amp, and these are all available for download. Stomp, thickener, um, you know, these sorts of things. Um, what happened was uh, he got confused about what are mids what are high and low mids, and when to use each one. And the thing is, there's not really a rule for when to use each one, but um, we can sort of match it to the amp or the guitar, but we can get different effects with different ones. So I wanna talk about low mids versus high mids when it comes to boosting your signal. And really, I'm just gonna talk about using it in front of the amplifier section. So sort of using a boost in front of the amp, we can think of it, rather than post EQ, which would be more like a studio EQ. I have other thoughts about high mids, low mids for that, uh, but that's a little more complex um, and it has a lot more to do with, with the mix and stuff. But for the purpose of today's demo, I'm just using a graphic EQ in front of the amplifier and cab section. So let's talk about it. I'm using an interesting combination and your combination might change. I'm using uh, the Basement B3 profile and I'm using this Strat. Um, everything I'm about to say is gonna be, prop you're gonna get different results if you have a Les Paul and a Marshall. And the reason is because those pickups, uh, a Les Paul compared to a Strat, is gonna have a lot more low mids than my Strat. Um, and a, a, a Marshall compared to this Baseman is gonna have a lot less low mids and a lot more high mids. And so, uh, let's talk about this. Here we go. First, you heard this sound right at the beginning. So I'm gonna play that for you one more time. Then I'm gonna cut some of the low mids and let you know what I mean by low mids. Now in the Kemper, we're gonna be limited to 640 and one, uh, 12, 1250, basically, uh, in terms of Hertz, uh, uh, 1250 and 640 for our low mids and high mids. Now, for high mids, I'm fine with this. For low mids, this is a little higher than I would like. I'd love to, for us to be at 550, sort of the classic secret tone uh, frequency for that megaphone tube screamer cut through thing. But 640 is gonna work just fine. If you're on a Helix or something, or um, maybe you have 600 or 500 on, a, on an EQ pedal, it doesn't matter, it's gonna work fine. It'll give you the same effect. So, I'm on the bridge pickup. Here's what that, that sound at the beginning. <laughs> Okay, beautiful. Now, um, I'm gonna actually cut my low mids and listen to what you hear disappear. What I hear there is that when I add the low mids back in, One's rock and roll, one is um, folky. Uh, it, to every season, turn, 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 there is a time. You know the song I'm talking about? It's that 60s jangly 
thing because that jangly sound was a thin sound. We're leaving the high end alone, but it's amazing how getting rid of that fullness gives you something like this. <laughs> Obviously, it's not right on. We want even less. We want a little less low unfoldment. But uh, the point is cranking it. Cranking it even more. It's this kind of thing, this little, this like roar, this kind of sound is just like back there. It, it really goes from 60s chimey um, sort of, I, now I know we're using more gain than chime, but it goes from that, and we need to be a little cleaner to get that real sound, but it goes from cleaner and, and chimier and thinner to Rolling Stones, uh, to... Um, uh, you, you know, a band like that, that kind of that early just telly plugged into something, you know, Keith Richards kind of. I mean, it's even way more exaggerated than a natural guitar would be. It's not really Keith at that point. That sounds like a, a, to me, that tone is a little bit reminiscent of like an early Tom Petty record or something um, that you'd get um, on a Sheryl Crow uh, kind of record. It's rootsy, it's Americana. Um, you get that sound of the low mid range uh, boosting it a bit, really gets us a thicker, uh, kind of humbuckery guitar more thing going into this basement, which is why we're getting that sort of rootsy sound. But boosting these low mids is gonna be helpful for making your guitar sound thicker, more like a humbucker, less like a thin telly, more like, whoa, is that a telly or a Les Paul kind of thing. It's gonna help this thinner Strat sound a bit more like a thicker, um, hotter pickup or really just hotter output um, guitar. You know what I mean? It's really. <laughs> To put it on um, another pickup position here, and this is pretty important because it, 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 you're gonna hear what this is. Let's go to the in-between position where we already have a lot less mids, and now we've got like, we don't have any boost going on. those low mids way up, really get a feel for what they do. That extra thick fatness is really great if you have those solo lines and stuff. They make even single notes feel fat and everything, but um, they make the chords a lot less clear, a lot more cloudy. <laughs> It's a lot more muddled than this. Instantly to me that has a little more of a blackface vibe. Now it's still not, you know, I need to raise the bass a bit and I'd really, and the treble, and really it's something I need to do post amp. And the breakup um, would, you know, is, is, is a different kind of character than a blackface, but instantly without, by lowering that fullness, it really sort of clears up the top endiness of the sound it, it, that getting rid of those low mids is a, is a, is a sonic signature of a blackface kind of motif. 
And that's why it's reminding your ear of a little more like a, to me, a little more of a late, uh, mid 60s type of sound uh, where, where the high end is very beautiful and all the notes are very clear, even in a chord. Something we didn't have with the Tweed era amps, but it's really because when we take out that low mid range grumble and we give it a nice healthy, like in a twin, a clean bass, we hear low notes, a lot, nice low bass note, and then we hear a, a high beautiful sort of strat singing along. Now, what happens with the high mids? What do we do there? So what, what did we learn here? Let's recap. Low mids, they're great for a growl, okay? They make single notes sound big and thick, right? But they don't really help us with our clarity. That growl doesn't help us with clarity in big chords, get big complicated chords. But that makes sense, right? Because rock and roll is about the one and the five, the one five and a maybe a, a one again, right? Or a one five and a maybe one three. But it, it's not, it's a lot of times small chord voices, you know, uh, played with aggression. And, and it lets that gain and that, that bloom of the amplifier sort of come out. So low mids are great for a growl not always the best for clarity. That growl can be beautiful, but it's not always the best for high-end, beautiful clarity. It, it has to be a, a beautiful rock sound, a beautiful growl, rather than a beautiful, pristine clean, which is why these tweeds were never really their best when they're kept completely clean. It's the overdrive sounds that really, really are amazing. And it's also why the later blackface stuff is everyone's sort of quintessential clean and why amps like the Steel String Singer and the Dumble, um, uh, uh, all, any Dumble really, those amps start with the idea, the players who those amps were designed for, Robin Ford uh, at the ODS and uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, whom the Steel String Singer was designed for, number one, uh, the number one Steel String Singer was designed for, they were already playing Fenders, right? So the Dumble sound tries to, in the ODS, it's like, how do we put more mid-range and give it a singing, sustainy tone? And the Dumbles have a different character, but the Steel String Singer, you know, um, you know, it, it kind of comes, there's an Ampeg topology, you know, as a donor amp there, but it's this big, clean, deeper bass than a twin and higher highs and just open up. It's very much in the Fender American quality. You're not getting a ton of low mids in those amps, except for the ODS, which, you know, maybe is piling on that mid range in the, uh, to get a, a leading, a lead sustain sound. Okay, high mids now. What do the high mids do for us? Well, I have some thoughts on this, um, but since this is a basement, uh, it's, it's more in the American style, right? So we get more low mids. So we're gonna leave those low mids where they are. <laughs> Now here's the bridge again. High mids, let's bring them way down and see what happens. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put it like this. The low mids are the roar of a lion. Roar. It's the it's that aggressive, like, uh-oh, there's a there's an animal in here. But those high mids are a little more like, it's a little more like the wow, wow. You know, that's the jaguar. That's the panther. You better watch out for that guy. He's coming down from the trees, climbing in your window, uh, snatching your people up. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's just, uh, it, it's deadly. It's no less deadly. But you might not even hear it coming. You know what I'm saying? You might not even hear it coming. So um, I'm, uh, you know, what's better? 
Well, it depends. This guitar is gonna easily handle more low mid frequencies. This amp already has a lot of low mids. The high mids though, to me, become a lot more Marshall-esque. Let's listen again. <laughs> There's definitely a plexi quality there that when I lower these disappears. What it really reminds me of is the mid range on a plexi um, is these high mids. You know, you roll it up on some amps and on like a Vox AC30. Um, the mid range, the, the mid range is kind of in the bass control, so you're lowering the lower end stuff, and um, you're also raising the mid range kind of up by by raising that bass up, and you're getting this just a lower grumble, and you can get a lot of lower mids there, but um, this hot these higher mids when you crank the mids on an AC on a uh, on a plexi, excuse me, you have the high presence, you have the treble. The next thing down is the mids, but it's not that low mid thing. Uh, the plexis really don't have a ton of that low mid fullness. Marshalls are known for their higher mid range, and that's a change that sort of Jim Marshall really made. Um, really, as he took the basement, it became the JTM 45. Components are changing as he goes across the pond and uses what he's using. And then, really, it's once the JM, the JTMs are sort of retired. Uh, he had already upscaled the back end to the JTM 45 100, which is you know a la Hendrix. And then, really, when the JMP comes out um, in is it 67, 66, or 66? 66, they probably built the first JMP. Once that comes out, it's really just um, it's it's really just a it's a new sound. It's the higher mid range sound. It's this amp. It's the fifty nine basement taken on a journey. Now with the plexi, it's not really accurate to call it a basement anymore. But it's that idea of an amp going towards. Um, you know, uh, just a, a, the plexi going towards a different sound. And it's really kind of remarkable. Turning up high mids on EQ always reminds me of cranking the mid range on the bright channel or the jumper channel, but bright channel of, of, um, uh, of, a, uh, of a plexi. It just gives it that. <laughs> Yeah, man, bright channel of this amp, bright channel of that amp. I don't know. It's just good. Now, again, we cut them out, and we don't have a terrible sound at all. It's the... It's, it's not the glow roar. It's the high roar, rawr, rawr, wow. You know, it's that type of thing. It's the jaguar, man. It's the panther. It's the cougar. It's the mountain lion, man. They, it is silent till it gets there. But um, and that really can have an effect on the high end because we're getting dangerously close to our treble and presence frequencies, and it it really can cloud them up. Um, not so much cloud them up, but but um, you know, give it that shh kind of sound, that, that sort of sound. And I kind of sometimes liken it to low mids are a bit like a bullhorn. Um, high mids are a bit like a walkie-talkie. Um, uh, that kind of has some truth to it. But what happens if we boost both of them? Well, if we boost both of them, we're going to get a lot more low mids for this guitar, and we're going to get that high mid range thing. So we're going to get something like this. <laughs> That's a sound. 
I'm gonna scoop both of them now, and I don't know why I'm gonna do this, because I already, I'm just gonna scoop it a lot, and I already know I'm not gonna like it. Um, it was nice. It was, it, was, it, it was lovely. What I would recommend is this. Here's the takeaway. If you've got a thinner guitar, like a Strat or a Tele, the low mids are instantly going to give you that roar and growl of a humbucker back, especially going into the front. And everything that we're talking about is in the context of going into the front of the amplifier. Um, you can definitely add low mids after the amp. It's not going to be quite as drastic of a change in terms of the way the amp breaks up but kind of just where it sits in the mix and its overall, you know, EQ curve. Thinner guitar, thicken it up with that, that, that 640 control here on the Kemper. Now, you want um, kind of a little more uh, bitey, cut through kind of growl, that, whew, that sort of, you know, Jaguar snappy mids. Those high mids are going to be where you want to go. And if you want to get more classic rock and rockin', that's where the Marshall sort of sound lies to me it, from the Marshall mid control. Those classic high mids are that Marshall sound. Um, also, if you've got an amp that's a little more in the middle, or maybe you've got something that's a little plexi inspired, and you want to go make it a little more thicker old school, you want to take a plexi and make it a little more JTM 45, or make it even more a little, you know, Fender Bassman, uh, 59 Bassman kind of thing, roll up those low mids. That's what's missing, you know? If you want more clarity in the high end, uh, ro try rolling down uh, mostly the low mids, but a little bit of those high mids and see if it doesn't clear your high end up. You get rid of all of the junk in the middle and you can start to get the bass and the highs and you get a lot more clarity in your chords. That is why a Fender lacks pretty much all mid-range. Uh, high and low, uh, and by Fender I mean a blackface Fender, you know, a, a, a mid-60s twin and and uh, Princeton and Deluxe and stuff. Um, you know, they they're warm sounding, the blackface ones, but um, they're not, I, you wouldn't categorize that term as strong in the low mids or strong in the high mids. You would categorize it as not strong in the mids at all. You'd say it's scooped. And because of that, beautiful jazz chords and blues, uh, and just beautiful, it just, it's a beautiful sound, the highs and the lows and the scoop in the middle. Um, it's really lovely. And it's um, in a lot of ways, very un-rock and roll. Uh, whereas the tweeds are uh, a little more uh, rock and roll, and, and that tradition sort of first continued on the, on the Jim Marshall side of things, um, where Fender was going cleaner, higher wattage, more headroom. Uh, he was going for more breakup, more speakers, bigger, louder. And um, it's really interesting stuff. The other thing I would say is, um, for mixing purposes, it's cool to raise both of them, but know that you're going to get in the way of vocals when you start to raise all, lift all your mids up. You're really not leaving any space for anything else. That's fine for a solo. I mentioned that low mids and high mids to a degree, but especially low mids, make your single notes just sound fat and big, um, much in the way compression can do that also. Um, but, but the other thing I would say is if you've got one guitar who's kind of playing, the, th think of that chimey Tom Petty sound or the, the you know, um, uh, just that 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 '60s, you know, flower child kind of kind of sound. That bright, shiny thing that picks through on a Strat, that sort of sound, or a Tele. You're gonna to want to bring the mids down and just try to get some chime out of the high end. So you have that chimey guitar sitting there, and then it allows another guitar to be a little more round and mid-rangey. If you have two guitars, and I've done this on recordings, you're gonna to want to scoop out the mids a bit of some of them, probably the rhythms. And I know people go, oh, scoop the mids, that's gonna sound terrible. I don't mean metal scoop the mids, but I mean between 500 and 1,000, sometimes you pull the mids down on your rhythm guitars, and it helps the high end come out a little bit, and you can still hear them well, but then it allows your lead guitar to be more round and mid-rangey and really just have a different space to sit sonically. That's especially true if you're not just using left and right as a way to separate the instruments. But 
but also using EQ. That can be a very, very helpful tip. I hope you've got a lot out of this. Uh, uh, my name's been HW. You've been watching Tone Jiggy TV, and uh, I hope this helped clarify low mids, high mids. It's simple. One's a lion, one's a panther jaguar coming to get you, climbing your windows, snatching your people up. I've been HW. Thanks so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. HW, out.